sometimes even better ratios than that. I mean, it's, it's like, this thing's just moving a ton of air. I'm Nick Pregnance with Calibrated Power. Here at Calibrated Power, we make the Stealth 64 VE Turbo for the Cummins. This turbo was built after a lot of R&D, a lot of testing, a lot of trying out stuff that didn't work. The reason we landed at this turbo is because it made power over the factory unit. We tried several compressor wheel only style upgrades without upgrading the turbine side and could never really add a significant amount of power to the truck. So we were stuck in that low 500 range with just the compressor wheel upgrade. No matter how hard we squeeze the veins, no matter how aggressively we tune the truck, it would just smoke more, make more heat, and barely make any more power. We're kind of stuck in that low 500 range, 530, somewhere around there. Keep in mind, a stock turbocharger can make 490, 500 horsepower pretty easily. So a compressor wheel only, you know, maybe good for 40 or 50 horsepower. Even upgrading the turbine without changing the veins, not really netting you much. From there, we built a few different nozzle assemblies. And when I say nozzle assemblies, I just want to show you something here. So on the 351VE, the exhaust comes in the volute off the manifold, goes through the volute and acts on the turbine through the nozzle. Okay, on a VGT turbocharger, the amount of area that that gas can flow through is adjusted by the actuator so it can be squeezed, right? And I'll show you that in a little easier detail right here. All right, so this shroud plate, which the nozzle ring fits into, the turbine kind of sits in there like that. So all your exhaust flows through these orifices or veins or volutes or nozzles or whatever you want to call them. This would be the nozzle ring. This would be the shroud plate. All your exhaust flows onto the turbine through that. So basically, when you close the veins, that happens. No exhaust flows through. When you open the veins, that happens, and as much exhaust as possible goes through. Okay, so when I say that the existing strategy out there in the tuning sphere is to set the vein minimums to 50%, I mean that the veins aren't allowed to open any more than this. Now, guys are making the most power they can possibly make by setting the veins here. So it's called bumping up the mins or setting the mins or big mins, uh, whatever you want to call it, basically forces the, the veins to stay at 50% or 40% or wherever they want to set them, right? The problem with that is that you only get so much, so wide of a gap for the exhaust to flow through. So what we thought, well, why are we limiting ourselves to this gap? Well, we're doing it because the factory turbine is only so wide. It's only eight and a half millimeters wide. So you can see why guys are setting the, setting the mins at 50% or 40% or whatever they're setting them to, because the width of the turbine is only so much. Okay, so we thought, why can't we widen the turbine out and get a little more acting area on that turbine? And when I say widening the turbine out, I mean, look at the width of our inducer compared to the width of the stock inducer. By widening that inducer, widening this piece here, we're allowing the vein assembly to act on a wider section of the turbine. Cool, Nick, you're bouncing all over the place. I get it. I just want you to see kind of what we're up to. So aside from widening the turbine, we also have to machine the center section face. We build a custom turbine and we have to go in and machine the exhaust housing to be wider so that more exhaust can flow through in that area that we, that we opened up. So basically by giving the, the turbine head two millimeters more width, we're saying, okay, a lot more action can happen on that turbine head. We can get more drive on it, which means more RPM out of the compressor wheel, which means more horsepower. How does that translate on the dyno? Well, about 120 horsepower. So on a truck that we had previously run a 64 mil comp wheel and just kind of ran the, ran the snot out of the turbine, stock turbine, we were at 530, I told you. We put this, uh, this upgraded exhaust setup that we built on it. Boom, 120 extra horsepower, right to 650 horsepower plus. Awesome. Okay, so this is what we want to run with. This is the first turbocharger that we've tested in a VE style that actually makes more power consistently, drives great, love it. So why am I here telling you about it? Well, you can read about this. I've said it before. It's all out there. Information's out there. The reason I'm here today is to talk to you about tuning it because you can do that wrong. 
And the way you do it wrong is by leaving those existing big min's files in the tune. On my right, your left, is the factory nozzle ring. Here's the stealth ring, the shiny one. You can see the width of the acting vane on the factory nozzle ring is fairly short. And then there's kind of this hockey stick to this short part of the vane. I call this area the bleed off area. So when this area, when the, when the veins are at 0% or 50, below 50%, basically you're in the bleed off zone. So you're not using all of the big vein, you're also bleeding pressure off through that shortened vein or that trimmed vein. Cool. Well, if you bleed that pressure off, you lose drive pressure, you lose good activity on the turbine, you lose power. Not so on our veins. On our veins, we want you to go all the way down into the mins. We want you to use the stock minimum vein position table. Here's why. If you do that, you're going to get the veins to open up all the way, and you're going to get to use our whole vein height, which is, remember, two millimeters taller than the factory vein. So not all, the vein is taller, the turbine's taller, the volute that the exhaust flows through is taller. So instead of getting this eight and a half millimeter window to act all your exhaust energy, we give you a 10 and a half millimeters. To use it, you have to open the veins up. If you don't open the veins up, you're gonna overdrive the turbocharger. What happens when you do that? Well, it does all sorts of stuff to protect itself. So if you're a tuner, what I need you to do is click on the link that I give you. It's gonna have the factory minimum vein position table with a couple of tweaks to it that are going to really get you helped out. It's going to have a maximum table for the factory as well. These are just good starting points. It's going to keep you out of trouble. It's going to make sure that you have a good starting position on the turbocharger. By starting position, I mean it's pretty much there. Just copy and paste the stuff. And what that's going to do is allow the turbocharger to act and move in a way it's going to take advantage of that bigger turbine, take advantage of those bigger veins, allow the customer to get that 650 horsepower potential and not get the turbocharger doing silly stuff to protect itself that you haven't seen before and it's going to get my customer service guys busy. Okay, so in summary, these veins were built to make power. This turbocharger was built to make power. In order to do that, you're going to have to change your phase a little bit, okay? If you're a tuner, pull yourself out of the groove. This does not tune like a traditional VE turbocharger does. I need you to listen to me. I need you to go to the stock mins or less. If the truck is not behaving the way you think it should, you need help, you need a file, whatever, um, I'm happy to help. You know, our goal is to give you the best running truck we could possibly give you. So give us a call, 815-568-7920. My name is Nick Prignitz.